Okay, for the example of manometer, before we talk about the last example, that is example 9, let us have a simple application of manometer first, okay? We will use manometer to measure the pressure drops across a horizontal flow section, okay? So uh, let me have some written handout here. So uh, application, oh sorry, of manometer. Okay, so we will first talk about the first application that is to measure the pressure drop across a horizontal flow section. Okay, this kind of pressure drop may be due to the presence of valves or engineering devices or any resistance to flow. Okay, let me draw a schematic about that. So suppose uh, you have a dot here. Okay, and let us draw some dotted line to enclose a certain region. Okay, this region is actually a flow section or some flow device, okay, or some flow device. Okay, so in order to measure this pressure drop, we will use a manometer. But uh, how to connect this or to uh, measure pressure drop? Well, we would put the manometer in this configuration, that is uh, in this way. So we have manometer tube, and then uh, we would uh, okay. connect this tube to both ends of this uh, flow section. Okay, so that would be the schematic. Okay, and uh, inside this manometer, we will have some manometer fluid. The shaded part would be the manometer fluid. And uh, there will be some fluid flowing in this direction. And let us mark down some of the information that we know in order to measure the pressure. Okay. For example, the fluid inside this dot will have the density rho one. Okay. And the manometer will have the manometer fluid will have a density rho two. In this case, as you can see, on two sides of a manometer fluid, there will be some of some kind of height difference. And we will mark this height difference to be h, okay, to be h. And we will also mark this opening to this boundary, okay, between the manometer fluid and the flowing fluid inside this dot to be a. That is uh, this one, will be a, okay. So let us write down the pressure equation that we have derived before. That is the hydrostatic equation about pressure, the variation of pressure due to elevation. So how can we measure that? First of all, as we can see in the previous handout, okay, uh, we will have three rules to construct the equation. So the first one would be delta P equal to rho GH. Okay, that means the pressure difference due to the elevation. Okay, equal to rho gh. Okay, the second thing is Pascal's law. That is, if two points are at the same elevation and interconnected by the same fluid, then the pressure that at that two points will be the same. And the third thing is that the pressure above will be smaller than pressure below. Okay, so we would use these three rules to help us construct the equation. Okay, so uh, let us construct that. But when we construct the equation, we need to also define what we call the destination point as well as the starting point. So uh, suppose I mark the starting point here and the ending point here, okay? So these two points are the points of interest, okay? Or some uh, points that we have the known pressure. For example, we know that the pressure there is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Okay, for example, a free surface. So we would mark that as either the starting point or the ending point, or some pressure that will have interest. For example, in this case, both ends would be having pressure that we are interested in. Okay, so we start constructing the equation here. So suppose at the starting point that is uh, number one, okay, that would be having pressure one. Okay, let me write that down. So it has a pressure one, and here there's pressure two. So we need to construct a way inside this manometer so that we can find out the equation. So how can we do this, okay? So we need to construct a path inside this manometer tube, okay? And we will write the terms about that. 
So at the starting point, the pressure will be P1, so we write down P1 here. Okay? And as we go down, at this position, we see that that is a boundary between two fluids, okay? Okay, that would be a boundary between two fluids. And what we have traveled is having the elevation A plus H, okay? Should be A plus H. And we are going from a higher position to a lower position. So we will have a term called rho one times G times A plus H, okay? And after that, as we know that by Pascal's law, we can jump from this level to this level. And then uh, in order to go to point two, we can move up towards uh, point two. But be aware that during this process, we are in two kinds of fluids, okay? When we travel from this position to this position, it has an elevation difference of H, okay? Going up by H units, okay? And inside the flowing fluid, we will go up by A units. So we will have two terms, okay? We have two terms, that is, because we go up by x units, so it will be minus rho to g h, okay? And we further go up by a units, so we will have rho 1 g a, okay? And finally, we get to the ending point, and this ending point we will mark that the pressure there, p2, okay? So here, that will be the destination, okay? For the destination as well as the starting point, actually is arbitrary. You can also start from here to go to here, okay? That's also fine. You will get the same equation based on the reasoning by using the three rules, okay? And after some simplification, as you can see that some terms can be eliminated. For example, this one, row one GA, row one GA, they can be canceled, okay? And uh, there will be some common factor, and uh, upon simplifying, you will get P1 minus P2 equal to rho 2 minus rho 1 times GH. Okay? We will get this equation. And then if, okay, if, okay, the flowing fluid, uh, suppose we are at a, at a dot, some kind of air dot, so the flowing fluid will be gas, then because it is a gas, so rho 1 will be much smaller than rho 2. Because inside a manometer, we will usually use a kind of fluid as a manometer fluid. So that, because rho 1 is much smaller than rho 2, so rho 2 minus rho 1 is just like uh, subtracting nothing, so it will be equal to rho 2. So that we can also uh, simplify more, so that will be approximately equal to rho 2 gh. Okay? So in this case, we will have two equations for measuring the pressure difference, okay? So uh, this kind of measurement is to ensure that the fluid can arrive at the destination with a specified pressure. For example, if you are designing heating, ventilating, and air conditioning, in short, there will be a HVAC system inside a building, uh, you would like the air pressure to be enough so that the air can go through all the air dust and supply air to all of the buildings. So one needs to measure the pressure to ensure that the uh, starting pressure is enough so that uh, all of the air can pass through the air ducts, okay, to the very end of the air ducts, okay? Well, uh, if the pressure measured, okay, or the pressure difference measured is shown to be not enough, then one may need to suggest some design alternatives. For example, uh, you can put a fan or have a larger fan at the starting point of this air duct to make the pressure higher or put some compressor or something like that, okay? Okay. So uh, we have measured the pressure difference by using a manometer and we can show that by measuring the height difference, okay? The height difference. Because we know that this pressure difference will be equal to the difference of a density times g times h, and h is the height difference between uh, the height difference between these two sides of the manometer fluid. So we can, by measuring h, we can get the pressure difference easily, okay? But uh, one thing I need to remind you is that, well, the fluid must not be miscible with each other, okay? For example, uh, what is miscible fluid, that means uh, oxygen and nitrogen, they can mix together, okay? Not just dissolve, but they are miscible. Okay, if the fluid is uh, miscible, 
then uh, it will, we have a big trouble because this kind of boundary would not exist. And also the manometer fluid should be denser than flowing fluid. Otherwise, there will be some manometer fluid floating into this air duct and contain this duct and the whole flow. The last example of this chapter, example 9, okay? The pressure in a natural gas pipeline is measured by the manometer shown in the figure below. With one of the arms open to the atmosphere, where the local atmospheric pressure would be 98 kilopascal. And we need to determine the absolute pressure in the pipeline, okay? So uh, let us do this problem by using the three facts listed in the previous slide, okay? So I will talk about how to apply this fact in this case, okay? So because there is a point of known pressure, well, that would be this one, okay? That would be this one. This is one of the known pressure here because this one is a free surface, okay? And uh, what is our point of interest? Our point of interest should be the absolute pressure in pipeline. That means the pressure here, okay? As I've mentioned, because it's a gas, so that the pressure difference due to elevation can be neglected. So that here, at this point, which is the boundary between natural gas and mercury, okay? Uh, at this point, the pressure is equal to the pressure in the natural gas, okay? We also need to identify the boundaries because uh, when we are adding or subtracting the uh, rho GH term, we need to identify for the change in density so that we have another rho GH term. For example, here, mercury and air, there's a boundary here. And air and water, there will be another boundary here, okay? So we need to have a separate rho GH term to account for this, okay? So uh, let us see how the path is constructed. Okay, well, you first go from this natural gas to here. Well, this uh, here has the same pressure as this. So you can move the starting point to this. I will mark that as P1. That is the pressure we need to have, okay? And after that, we would continue to travel towards this position, okay? But how? Well, as I've mentioned, by Pascal's law, if two points at same elevation are connected by the same fluid, then the pressure will be the same, so that you can jump from here to here and go up, okay? Because we are going up, so we need to subtract the rho GH term, okay? So minus the rho GH term. Here should be the uh, density of mercury times G times H1. H1 would be the height of this, okay? Later, I will substitute values here. I just make a symbol here for my convenience, okay? And uh, in this case, because we have no information about the density of air, but we know that air is a kind of gas, so here we would neglect pressure change of air due to elevation, okay? Well, sometimes the writing steps may be a little bit different. Why? Because uh, some of the factors would be noticed uh, during the analysis of the problems, okay? After that, because we can declare pressure change, so we can directly jump from this point to this point with no change in pressure. And uh, if you would like to get into the destination, then you should move in this way to get into this position. And uh, we apply Pascal's law once again. We can jump from here to here with the same elevation and go up to this free surface. And here, because we are going up, so we will again subtract one more term, rho W G H2. Okay? And finally, we get into this position. This position is what? It's the free surface. That means the surface that has direct contact with the atmosphere. So here we will have PATM. We finally established the equation, okay? By using the three facts we have established before, okay? And what is left is to substitute those values, okay? Because we are given that the specific gravity of mercury is 13.6, uh, that means the density should be 13.6 times 1,000. And we would substitute values in this case, so 13.6, uh, 1,000 and then 9.81, okay? By default, it's 9.81, unless otherwise stated. Minus uh, 1,000, uh, 9.81 uh, times 0 0.7. That will be equal to 98000, 0, 0, 0, 
Okay, so this is the atmospheric pressure after converting kilopascal to pascal. So we will get this value. And finally, you will get uh, 12500 zero, zero pascal. That will be equal to 125 kilopascal. Okay, correct to three significant figures. Okay. So we get the final answer. That will be 125 kilopascal. Okay. For other pressure measurement devices, besides barometer and manometer, there are other common types of pressure measurement devices. They include a burden tube, pressure transducers, piezoelectric transducers, and dead waste tester. Because they are not emphasized in this course, only their names will be mentioned here in this tutorial video. Okay? For details, please refer to the lecture notes as well as the textbook. Another thing I would like to remind you, okay, there's some uh, empty space here. I would like to remind you on significance figures. Okay, well, uh, it's the practice to retain, okay, more digits before uh, computing the final answer, okay? Well, suppose uh, your final answer, you would like to have three significant figures, okay? Before you really calculate the final answer, please retain more digits. For example, four significant figures or five significant figures, so that you will get more accurate answers. So that's the end of chapter one. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any further questions, please send us an email about your inquiries about the course contents, okay? We will reply to you as soon as possible.